Hello, we're here with Eric and Mike today from Legacy, and they're going to talk to us about fast and efficient development for small teams. Thank you. So we work for a nonprofit organization called Legacy. Uh, you may know them from the Truth Anti-Smoking Ads. Um, as a team, uh, we've uh, uh, made our process uh, uh, much more efficient between uh, this last project we did from when we first started to now. And uh, we are trying to share some of the lessons we learned with, uh, with you in this poster. So, <clears throat> so the, the big thing that we really got down to an art, we feel, is uh, this first panel here about tickets, tasks, stories, whatever you call them at your work. But uh, basically, you know, it's your unit of work that a developer completes from beginning to end. Um, so, so in our process, um, what you want to do is you want to get together with everybody, uh, estimate. Uh, we have different roles over on the side here um, that, that are involved in this entire process. Uh, so we, have a, we, fo we follow an agile methodology. Uh, so we have a product owner, the person who basically handles the vision, figures out the new features, and a project manager that uh, handles uh, breaking those features down into tickets and stories that then a developer can uh, rock and roll on. Um, and and this, these are more like uh, roles than individual people. If you have a small team, you may not have, you know, 10 people to have different, uh, a singular, singular role so people can share them. So <clears throat> with tickets, you have the product owner figuring out the features and you have the project manager and the developers getting together to uh, uh, estimate them and to uh, work units that can be completed through the rest of the process. And we've learned that keeping them as small as possible uh, is one of the most important factors in having a smooth development process. Uh, you know, big big tickets, you know, they get stuck in the pipe. You know, you may have issues that come up. And uh, it's much easier when it's a smaller ticket that everyone can work out uh, to, <clears throat> can work on together to get through the pipe quickly. Um, so anyway, so when we finish with tickets, we move on to development. And uh, so as a small team, we have, uh, we're just two developers and uh, we, we are our, our uh, repository strategies. We use feature branches, which I hope everybody does. Um, so we have a dev branch, which is uh, for staging. Uh, we have a feature branch, which is for uh, any given feature, which is uh, tied to a ticket or story. And uh, and of course, we have a production branch, which is where we uh, put everything into production or master. Um, <clears throat> so with development, you know, one one of the key things you want to do is you want to automate as much stuff as possible. So we're really big fans of, say, using South for data migrations, uh, using Fabric for uh, automating deployment. You know, you want to do as little manual stuff as possible that is tedious and not rel directly related to the ticket. Um, so also in terms of uh, testing, you know, you want to have, uh, you know, unit tests in place so that you can automatically run those and make sure your tests work. And, uh, you know, and what's nice about having a small ticket is that, you know, typically, you know, when you have a very large ticket, uh, you you don't want to spend so much time writing tests because it takes too long, and then you skip things. With the small ticket, it's easy to write enough tests to just cover what's necessary. So, and anyway, with that, I'm going to pass off to Mike Wode, my partner. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Um, so, yeah, you just heard about you know how sort of how we figure out what we want to do, how we start doing it, um, how we make sure we did it right, and then once all that's done. Um, we push it out, we deploy it, um, and we talk a little bit. So, so you know, everybody has a production environment. We also have several environments, and we deploy, for example, during development to um, either staging or um, sort of our our dev environment. And we have we make sure we have at least one of these per developer, so no one's ever stepping on anyone anyone else's um, toes. Um, and with something like Heroku and Amazon, it's really nice because you can make this now really closely mirror your production environment. You can catch some bugs. Um, much faster before they get out to production. Um, and then once all that's done, you know, you kind of go into your monitoring and reporting loop. Um, we use a lot of logging so we can track stuff down. Um, logging statements, you know, you can't have too many of those in your code. Um, we have some sort of heartbeat management stuff with Pingdom, um, and that's great because, you know, we, you get a text message on your phone when you need it, and you don't get 100 text messages when there are 100 errors. Um, so error aggregation is really great. I highly recommend it. Um, and um, also we have not just monitoring on sort of code errors, but we do what we call data integrity checks, where we'll make sure that just the data matches up. So there's sort of different levels of error handling. There's, you know, just your regular system error that might throw a stack trace. And then there's also something that says, hey, the data is not right. Check it out. Um, so that's our process. 
And uh, one more thing, uh, we're hiring, so <laughs> so hard to find Python developers, and uh, it's a great great position, uh, great benefits, and you're doing something that's helping the world, literally. So uh, you can contact me at epolakovichkar at legacyforhealth.org, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen.